cool. Okay. So, I've got a treat for you guys today. We're here with somebody who perhaps knows a little bit about hike and fly racing. And uh, he's going to give us some insight into how do you win at hike and fly. So, who are you? <laughs> And what do you what do you know about hike and fly? Hi everybody, I'm Christian Kriegelmauer, coming from Switzerland, all the way to England. It's a pleasure to meet you here. And yeah, I started flying in '98. Then I did some competitions, won the European European Championship in 2004, the World Cup in 2005, six, and seven, and 2009. It was the change to the hike and fly. I set my goal for the Red Bull X Alps and I won 2009 to 2019 every edition. So for me, uh, it's a pleasure to explain about my experience in hike and fly or whatever you like. So how do you win at hike and fly? <laughs> oh, yeah, I mean, Kriegel has won every event basically that he's entered. Um, so. <laughs> It's not just like the X Alps, you know, there's uh, Born to Fly, there's the X Pier, uh, Verco Fly, uh, Eiger Tour, there are lots of different hike and fly events. So clearly you've worked out the formula or you're just really, really good. Is there, is there something that you could say, like if you're going to sum up, how do you win? How do you win a hike and fly race? Maybe there is, is a different... Um things um, I think about it's uh, one point of view it's that it generally I'm personally I'm a, uh, a sportive guy so I, I really like to, to push myself to the limit to, to improve in the preparation and to see in the competition how it's working and I really want to win so this is uh, when I do running competition or flying competition generally and also in hike and fly. And this is one part. The other part is that I start flying very early. So I was uh, seven when I had a ton of flight. I was nine when I tried the first time to inflate the glider and, and to fly a little. And uh, when I started flying with 16, I flew really a lot. So this, this experience in young age, it, I think it um, gives me back a lot now after 21 years flying. Then I was possible to, to work for Advance for a, as a test pilot. And as a test pilot you fly in all conditions, different wings, you go to the limit. And I made around four to 500 hours per year. And this sure. gives a, a lot of, of, of experience, of feelings. Then maybe the competition, the, the PwC, it's a very high level of pilots, 120 pilots, they're pushing the same goal and uh, you have to push otherwise you are slow. So uh, this, this style of really efficient flying, pushing as lot as possible, this brings in hike and fly also a good quality. And finally I, I grab back to a different piece of experience. Um, finally I also do a acro. In aerobatic for sure you go you go to the limit or the limit sometimes. And when I was learning to, to control a wing after stall or after I learned this infinite tumbling with all the fails. So it gives a lot of experience in uncontrolled situations. Mm. And I think the high and fly success for me it looks like a uh, a summary of all this experience and um, yeah finally I also was lucky to start on a time where the sport was maybe not that developed as now so 15 years ago there was uh, no hike and fly competitions at all there was only the, the X Alps for some stupid guys and uh, if you look back to last year the ninth edition of the X Alps there was uh, 20 uh, to 30 teams very, very good prepared. And also in the other competitions, in the other hike and flight competitions, the, the level is increasing, it's, it's everybody's good prepared. The equipment, there, there are several manufacturers that do specific equipments for the, for the hike and fly sport. And it, this gives a, a much higher level. So 
we have to adjust to this level and I could believe that to start from a good level to the high level of hike and fly it needs a lot of, of work and training and for me it was step by step because it was not exist. Mm. Yeah. But the other pilots that you are flying against, I mean some of them are brilliant pilots, they're, they're hardcore dudes as well, I mean they you know, <laughs> cross big mountains and you know, climb up ice faces and you know, they're, they're tough, they can, they can run up mountains really fast, they, they fly PWCs, what do you think gives you the edge every time? What are you, what are you doing differently that the other guys aren't doing? Maybe there is one secret that helps me a lot, it's uh... I really want to win the, the event X Alps when I did the first time, 2009. Yeah. And I was able to win, so the pressure to win again was away. It feels like I can do, but I not have to win. And every edition I did, it was a, a gift and it was a pleasure to see the, the, the Alps, the, a new game, my, my team to, to, to race. And often I was in a situation where I don't know, I have to go left or right. So what, what's the better decision? And finally I thought, let's try one because if it's not working, it doesn't matter. I won already. And during a normal hike and fly day, there is maybe 10 or 20 decisions. And if you are free from pressure to just choose one option and to try, it's some kind of, of, of interesting game of, of fun. Mm. And sometimes it gives me, or it gives me the, 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 the possibility to, to have an even bigger advantage. Because it was working brilliant and Maybe this, this helps. But also I was always thinking what could be the best possibility, the best option. So the best option in paragliding is just to fly straight and have always a lift. Which you seem to do all the time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, look but, at the line it's, tracking. <laughs> it's my dream to fly straight, to fly fast and to be, to be yeah, afterwards also honest to say, okay, now I have these possibilities, okay, let's do like this, but if something is, it's happens, if, if everything is perfect, I fly straight. So, that means if I get the conditions to fly straight, I'm prepared for this. Yeah. Otherwise, if you are scared about the conditions, if you are um, a bit uh, unsure what to do, and, and then you get good conditions, you are not able to, to grab this. I think yeah. until you realize that it's a good, good moment, the conditions are over, and you lose this advantage. So maybe this um, gives me some meters or some extra advantage in the race. Can we talk about fear a little bit? Because uh, the whole hike and fly racing was at this such a high level. The pilots are having to push into conditions that nobody would fly in. I mean, in the PwC, they would call level three and everybody would be on the ground. But it, you seem to be able to be the last pilot in the sky or the first pilot in the sky when it's really difficult or fern conditions or something like that. So there must be moments where, you've, where you're pushing right at the limit in the X Alps where conditions are wild. Do you feel fear? How do you manage that? How do you decide where to, how much to push and, and when to come off and not fly? Yeah, this, especially in a, in a long hike and play competition, the problem is the, the, the decision taking while I'm get very tired. Right, yeah. And I know that I am in, 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 a, in a kind of tunnel. I'm not realistic. Uh, anymore, so I need my team also to, to ask about my feeling, about my topic. And I know that it's um, even, it's already hard, but it's even more difficult in, in these situations. And generally, pushing in a competition where you know that every 
meter it's not flyable you have to walk it's a very uh, bad situation it's, yeah. it's, uh, it's normally the temptation is to, is to fly yeah. all the time yeah. so it, 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 it's in generally I know in the beginning or before that I do something which is uh, really dangerous but in the race I, I never feel really danger or really uh, fear because I'm really focused in this moment so I, I not have anything else to to think about to decide and it gives me also the possibility to to be more comfortable so it sounds it sounds maybe stupid but it, it was 2015 for example there was a very windy uh, week or a very difficult weather situation with fern and wind there was south fern and west wind yeah and so it, it was very on the limit because if it's raining or cloudy or too much wind, it's clear that we not fly. But when it's nice weather and a bit windy, then it's hard to walk because others go up and try to fly. Yeah. And it was uh, in my six editions, it was 2015 where this weather, this kind of weather was more than one day push us to these hard decisions. And and finally, it was um, always very uh, shitty uh, decisions to go up and to know that it can be very dangerous. Hmm. But there was also clear on a checklist, for example, that the, the takeoff is only with a good feeling. So I can walk up in strong wind and I do nothing wrong. Hmm. I can prepare my glider and I do nothing wrong. So I can have a decision when I'm ready, but then I can do a big mistake. And the mistake is to inflate the glider in the wrong time or with a bad feeling. And once in the air, for sure, you have to manage as good as possible. Uh, once in 2013, there was a, a storm coming from, from the west. There was valley breeze from the west and I flew against and the outflow from the from the thunderstorm plus the valley breeze it was too much it was around 50 to 60 km per hour and i was above so i not realized how strong they come mm -hmm. and when i realized the strong wind because i saw the the trees and the, the fog the, the rust and then i i realized i have to fly away so it means back but on this time for me it was clear that it's more important that I can land safe instead of have some meter more. Yeah. So there is, in one direction, I try to push the speed and, and the distance, and on the other side, the safety. As long as I feel that it's safe, I can push to the speed. And as soon as I realize that it's come danger, it means I got a, uh, always I got a bad feeling, and then I have to change something that I get a good feeling again. So fly away. It was the same in 2017. I flew in Italy, direction um, uh, Monaco finally. And then there was also strong wind coming and I had to, to fly away from my airspace too. So there was, once was the wind and the, the, the safety. And the other, was, the other point on this corner was the, the airspace to not be qualified, disqualified. disqualified yeah. So I had to fly away from the wind and away from the airspace. And they flew 18 kilometers away. On from the course. From the course. Yeah. And yeah. I know these 20 minutes, uh, I flew 20 minutes and I knew that I have to walk back uh, two and a half, three hours. Yeah. But for me it was clear I have to do this because it's safe. It's the only reason, uh, the only way to, to land safe. And finally I was lucky in these six editions. It's, uh, it's around um, yeah, 60 days where I did high cut flag competition in a really high level. Maybe 100 days I did uh, in total and finally I, I was lucky to have only maybe three, four situations like this to realize shit, I, got, I, go, I was too, too far, I mm. pushed too much, yeah, so I have to respect and go for the safety. Yeah. But I think to to realize that it's danger, it's very important, and then to accept this and 
to go for the plan B. I know, uh, I know an, an option to, to, to escape. This is always very important. Are you looking for those options while you fly? Always. Yeah. So you've always you've always got your I your escape. You're not just driving, and then when you feel danger, you you start looking. You've you've, you've got this kind of part of your brain is looking for the safety. Op I feel ease. I feel that I make a plan, but it's the the efficient way. So where is the next terminal? Where is the good line? And also plan B, what I can do if it's not working. I mean a plan B for the efficiency, um, also plan B for the safety. Mm. So if it came danger, that I can escape. Yeah. Uh, the same it's in the mountains when it's glacier or in the, in the flat when it's trees. So if it's not working with the glide, if it starts to be uh, tricky or headwind, what I can do that it's still safe at least a landing. So as long I have these two plans, one for the efficiency and one for the safety, I can continue. Mm. So and all the time I do new plans. And one plan is for the efficiency, one for the safety. And if there is a moment where I say, okay, now it's not safe anymore, I not have to looking for a plan for the safety. I already have this in my mind. So I can switch to the other one and I, I, I learned that it's very important if once I go for the plan B, I have to follow until I'm safe and not until I feel now it's coming good. And yeah. then switching back, yeah. because this switching back, it's, it's an unserious decision. Yeah. And so you choose a line and then you stay on that line, like yeah. make it work, yeah. make that line work. Yeah. Sometimes it's the same with the efficiency. If if you if you have an idea and you try this, and then you know you see another glider or a bird, and then you switch away from your plan. Yeah. Sometimes it's a good option, but normally it, it's, it's it's even worse. Yeah. And then you you're between yeah. the two, and then you yeah. look back at your other one and think, oh, yeah. I should have gone that way, and then yeah. you're, you're halfway. Exactly. Between two lines, exactly. and this is the, so, the worst line. So to. To learn how to find options, but also to stick on this option, to f to follow your plan and to to bring it to the end. Yeah, this gives you efficiency. And for sure, it's sometimes in competition it's difficult because there are many people around you. Some they have better glides, some they climb even better, and you you're normally you're focused on the better ones. And not on yeah. the worst. Yeah. So if you focus also on the other one, they they was they are not so lucky as you. You get a good feeling because you you're on the sunny side, and to to see all the the others option, I think it's important mm. to to have the good feeling because you're not always unlucky. Sometimes when I was young, for sure, I feel always ah shit I'm unlucky. The others always better and yeah. shit. And now I, I realize that, that that the luck it's it's um, it's same for all, but you have to try, and yet also to see the others to have a good feeling. Um, let's talk a little bit about gear. Um, ultralight string string harness with uh, the single skin glider. Um, or a full racing setup <laughs> in the pod harness of that. For something like uh, X Pier or X Alps, is it something you've considered? Have you thought about doing like ridiculously light for yeah. the speed up mountains? What, yeah. Which way would you advise? Yeah, I think today we have so many possibilities in in um, in equipment choosing. So. The main question is what I like to do and how important is it? Is it more important to have less weight because of walking or better performance or comfortable harness because of long flights? And while we do some competitions where we have to run up, fly down, run up, fly down, so the weight, to keep the weight less, it's very important and the performance, it's not important, so the strapless with the P 
or the pie is, is very very good com um, equipment. Sometimes also a single skin would be good, but the single skin normally it's more slow. It's not possible to accelerate, so I lose also time to come down. So maybe it's not not the best option. So this means to think about your goals, but also to try different equipments if possible and take the time and analyze where you can win some, some seconds or some minutes. This is my way. Mm. And finally, to think about the next equipment, maybe XHUB 2029, um, yeah. <laughs> in 10 years, I mean, okay. what could be the best possible equipment? And the, 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 comfort, the comfort of the harness not have to be better because we are comfortable for 10 hours and the days are not longer than 10 hours. So yeah. it's still 1.3 1 kilo. So to reduce the weight instead of more comfort, it's the, it's the way. Hmm. Then we have to, to expect the safety. It means this uh, um, homologation. So in, in this way, we are clear um, in, in position. So we have to deal also with this. And by the glider and harness, we have to deal with, this, with the strength to keep the weight to, for the G-force to be safe. And for sure, the glider could be more light with more performance and more speed and more stability. So the dream is quite, quite open. Yeah. And I think to find out yeah, what, what it needs or what is the best for yourself or for your goals, this is the, the first step and then the second step to, to try what is the limit of, of, of the team. I mean the team is me as a pilot, my glider and my equipment. And if I know these limits or these this, um, rules, I can compete with a good feeling. I can push to the limit but not over. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I, I, for example, this this is um, is interesting. Uh, in training, sometimes I really like to have a really light equipment, like a 1.5 kilo flying equipment, to run up. It's a very good feeling, and then it's possible to fly down. But after 10 seconds of flying with this light equipment, I realize shit, there is no fun. There is no speed. There is no performance. Yeah. There is a bad feeling because no helmet, no back protection. Yeah. And then I realized it's not all about the weight. Yeah. It's good to have this experience to realize what it gives and what it, what it means. But in generally, this x alps equipment with the good comfort, good performance, 7 kilo equipment, it makes me most, mostly happy because I can do everything. I can walk up, I can run on the road, and finally I can fly for 10 hours, or like Patrick Falken, he flew 300 FAA Triangle with this equipment. So yeah. it's, it's, I think it's um, the, the, the only equipment which is all in one. Even a helicopter or a sub spiral is possible. <laughs> <laughs> for when he gets to goal and he's you know, doing the show <laughs> over the boat. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, for the final flight, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, there is one dream for sure. There is, a, if we once have a wing which is controllable in, in flat and means in, in speed also, yeah. that you can make it big to climb well in thermos. Yeah. And once you're on, on a base or on the mountain, you can make it very small to have a top speed from 100 and the glide ratio 1 to 1. Yeah. To really go down. Yeah. It's also for the safety. If you go to a cloud, for example, if you go to close, you can reduce the flat and then just yeah, get fly out away with high speed and it, yeah. it makes much more fun for sure. <laughs> Have you experimented with anything like that? I like think in the past there was there was gliders with the zipper around. Yeah. I remember there was tandem gliders, but we never had the there was that uh, bionic, the bionic glider yeah, that had a, to reduce a queue in, in the middle. In the middle and down. So there was some, some trying, but sometimes it's interesting to watch back. 30 years ago, they tried out so much things, so much systems and, and gear and everything. 
And now we still have a glider with cloth lines, <laughs> some, yeah, some leaders, straps, yeah. and it's, uh, it's working well, finally. <laughs> yeah? And the, the whole um, hike and fly racing, the amount of competitions that you do, does it take a, a toll on your family life? Is it difficult to do this sort of racing, which is risky? I know you've got children, so how do you balance the, the risk and the time that you need for, for lots of competition flying with trying to keep your family life? Yeah, the balance, it's, um, it's always tricky. And I remember before the family, I really pushed all the competitions. I was away from home for half of the year, 25 weeks. Yeah. And it was good to see all the, the world and the competitions. And then with the family, it was also good to be at home and to have fun with the boys. And, and for sure, this, is, uh, this balance is very difficult. But I, I realized that it's still important to me to, to have the competition. The, uh, the competition, or especially the X Alps, is part of my life. It's part of my work. And I really like the focus of having a goal to, to prepare on. I mean, the, the training and the, the equipment, the developing of, of everything. But also to have not only the sport and and focus on on one part of life. It, it means it's it's good to have the the change to the family, also to a different work and the sport. I, I think these three three legs of, of stability gives me a good good balance. Mm. And finally, in the in the competition or in the training, while I have uh, strange conditions. Um, it's 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 good to focus on this and not to think about the others, especially the the family. Sometimes it's um, it's a question, yeah, can you do something really danger while you have family? And and for sure it's a it's a good question, and it sometimes um, pushes me to think about stopping flying, but then I think about what I do next because. Uh, Sometimes, uh, yeah, it, it's it's good to, to reduce, to to focus on on less. But in generally, I like to do what I'm what I'm like to do and what I'm good in. Yeah. And uh, finally, I'm I feel good in, in paragliding, so why not competing? And this is the way I, I work at the moment, and I hope to to to, to stay in in shape. I mean. I practice a lot to to know to understand what is possible and where are my limits and then to focus only on this to be to be serious to be focused and then uh, yeah to hope that it works cool so you you yeah. sort of try to focus just on on the competition when you're in the competition and then focus yeah. on your family when you've got family right, time yeah. focus on yeah. the work and yeah that's how you balance it is just to just sort of have much narrow focus on that activity rather than trying to think of your family while you're flying and exactly. your work and yeah. it keeps you your attention focused yeah. which probably improves the safety I suppose because you I feel you're not distracted you're, you're totally in the moment yeah. to have family and thinking about your work it, it's not really focused on the family and to bring the family to a competition then it's not really focused on the competition yeah. and it's mixed Sometimes it, it's, it's good, but most of the time it's more stressful and, 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 and I miss the focus and this, I think, it's, for me especially, it's the, it's the start of the day. Hmm. Right, well, uh, this year we've got the, the X-Pier coming up and the, the entry level was, was really high and was really difficult to get in, so I got in and Kriegel didn't make the cut. Kriegel's not doing the he's not doing the XP this year. Um, does that mean the end of Kriegel Mara? Are we not? Are you are you never going to fly hike and fly no. again? What's for that? No, I think the the X Alps and the XP it changed all year. It's uh, maybe the the famous or the the hardest races in hike and fly. Um, both races I did several times XP for example three times. And for me, it was a very interesting competition. It was a new 
experience. I mean, it's the Alps working a bit different than the Pyrenees. But now I felt to do different competitions and they are more and more competitions. I focus on the hike and fly competitions. So um, it's, it's, it's good to have the recovery after hike and fly competition. And there is a competition after XP where I li really like to do and the recovery, I think it's not enough. So I have to be serious and, and um, make a decision, XP or not. And there is a Dolomite Superfly. I also uh, like to compete once in the Dolomites. And so I yeah, have to spread my time. And for this, for this time or this year, I, I, I was against XP, but, but it means not that I stopped because uh, now I'm 37. I feel uh, in the best shape ever and I'm still motivated to train and to develop new, new tactics, new material and, and for this I need the competition. And I saw the field, 45 athletes, teams, it's a, it's a big, big competition already. So mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I was, I was feeling that, that maybe I should go again, but yeah, maybe 2022. But we'll be seeing you in the X Alps. X Alps, the the selection is soon. Yeah. So I, I'm prepared to to make the inscription and then the training keeps going and yeah. Cool. X Alps for me for the seventh edition, it's a it's it's a good challenge and I hope they they change the turn points a little so it's a new route it's in for sure new weather and a new challenge anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Superb. So. Excellent. So we'll be seeing Kriegel in the x -Alps, we hope. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Well, thanks, thanks a lot for your yeah. time. I really appreciate it. It's really good getting some insight yeah. into the, the mind of the master of hike and fly racing. And yeah, I uh, yeah, wish you lots of success for all the hike and fly that you do this year. Thank you. And you too. I mean, uh, for you, the, the XP will be also a good challenge. And yeah, we'll see. I'll keep going. <laughs> I have, I have lots of inside tips now, so watch out you guys, see you in the next pier. <laughs>